we captured it through the lenses of our eyes in a way what it meant to us to live in this environment. So knowing everything that we know now and knowing that everything that we was talking about has started to happen in terms of the redevelopment, the pushing out, the land grab, there's this powerlessness I feel. Our parents have come here for a better future and, and in many ways it seems like that has happened but also seems like that hasn't. is that um, it's a story of migration and um, anytime um, a family decides to relocate or a person decides to relocate to a new environment to um, live a better life there are always consequences that come with those decisions Even Sandra, when they talk about the property stuff, and I was reading like four thousand pounds just a month for rent, something like that was in King's Cross, and I was thinking, I don't know, that's that's expensive. And so, you know, right now I'm at Oak and Castle, and I'm looking at this particular high-rise flats that they look really pretty inside, but I know that defo the rents here, it's definitely dramatically increased from what it was ten years ago. It was Hager Estate, and obviously it was social housing. You know, obviously the estates maybe were a sore eye to maybe Elephant Castle, and then, you know, Southern Council goes on through generation projects. But, you know, for my own research, I've written a 6,000 word academic paper on gentrification. That's the smart technology cities. You know, um, that is a sort of dis dismantling of a community, and it's uh, so exciting to see looking at houses that you knew you grew up in, but you could probably not afford. Even so, yeah. See that building there? That was meant to be built during the recession or just before the recession. But because of it, it had to be postponed. And I remember we used to call it the hotel. There used to be like an old hotel there. And it was run down. You remember how like Waterloo and Elephant used to have like massive run down buildings? Remember on that roundabout towards um, St. Thomas's, there was like a building that was massive where Park Plaza is now. And there, it was a complete run down car park. Like I remember when like it looked apocalyptic around here. Do you remember that? Do you remember, you remember that yeah. on the roundabout? Mm -hmm. It was mad. which we don't take into consideration. Mm. We don't take into consideration the trauma that's caused through being in a gang and the things that you might see. You don't even have to be in a gang. The Woolwich Jack boys, the Somalians that came over from war tour Somalia, to an extent they're treated for the things that they've had to see and endure. But it's, a, it's been a war zone here in London. Do you know what I mean? In the early 2000s, it was a war zone. And we don't take that into consideration. Um, Okay, we're not crack babies and whatnot, but there are kids that have, they're completely apathetic, they have no sense of emotion, of empathy, of, of anything, of reason, because their dad was a live wire, probably a little bit trigger happy, and their mum has never really shown love and accidentally got pregnant, do you know what I mean? And then you've got to grow up in an environment and your parents don't know how to deal with that because they didn't know, their parents didn't know how to, and it just comes with a cycle. And then you think you're normal, and it's not. You try and function in like a, I don't know, a nine to five work setting. And people don't last because they don't have the skills that would enable them to kind of sustain those kind of relationships. So it's hard enough to chop and change from being a little bit road to then having to go into the corporate environment as it is, do you know what I mean? It's fucking hard. But if you don't have the skills but you need an income, how do you how do you change that? So then you're stuck with low level kind of menial jobs. So you never get the skills, you never get the money and it's just it, continue the cycle. 
serious. So fingers crossed, I'm looking at how we're going to organise a few things on the square. Right. Even if it's like films, market, the whole shebang. The square, they're going to knock this down. They're knocking that's, it down, yeah, right? that's coming down at some point. And I need to introduce you to the people that are running the, what do you call it? The drama school. Where's that? There. Oh, okay. Yeah. Look, okay. Huh? Right. Because they, they've got recordings, they're going to have everything in right. there. So I need to introduce you yeah, guys. I'm up, I'm up for it. <laughs> Listen, you need to come and have a look at my garages, you know. Yeah, for real. When, um, okay, Road. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You haven't seen it, have you? No, I've heard about it. <laughs> huh? I'll be there, though. Huh? Yeah, man. But listen, when, when, when? Soon, brother. Soon, when? soon, soon, soon. Yeah? soon. The okay. film's coming. The film's what, coming. Huh? The film's well, is coming. Is that Nigerian soon, British soon? <laughs> <laughs> Which one is it? It's soon, soon. Huh? It's, it's no, soon, no, 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 no. British soon, British, British soon. soon. British okay, good, 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 good. Funny because. Through the struggle of our experiences, we've created a cultural hub that other people have come inside benefit from without any of the quote-unquote sacrifices. Just, oh, I love it. It's diverse, it's colourful, and wow, I might take over. And then now you have us inside looking out. We grew up, but now we're looking on the outside of have you heard there's this new area, there's this new this, there's this new that, but everything is not by us, everything is based funnily enough around black, like jazz, so jazz event, you know? The music and the vibe and everything, like the surroundings, everything else was far from it. It almost highlighted a point that Carla made years ago when he said, what is black? is cool, except the people, you know? I don't know. Whatever we produce is cool, but us. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So, we like our music, we like our like this, that, mm -hmm. and, but for us actually there, oh no, that's a bit, you, you're too, no. Can I, can I enjoy you from afar, Absolutely. please? Can you divorce the creativity from the creative, yeah. from the artist? That's the problem. When you think about like how people are influenced to live in sexual housing, the lifestyle is just different, really, isn't it? And it's kind of like, like not to sound corny or whatever, but like it's through like all of that adversity that like these ideas come out. When I'm thinking about how that looks like in the future, it's weird. I'm like, I'm feeling in like definitely in a weird position because, like I said, it's kind of. Um, I don't really feel like much effort has been focused on like what is happening in the South. Um, and it's kind of, all right, for example, all right, so everyone's talking about the Haygate now, which has obviously been knocked down. And it's kind of, there's a whole culture within the Haygate estate by itself. You know, like a whole group of people who are doing like a whole like bunch of things and like, you know, um, like their lives were interconnected with other people and that is not there anymore. When we went up to the rooftop in the National Theatre and there was that red backdrop, that to me, that red backdrop was like a wall of separation or some type of mental block, some type of physical block. It felt like a, a place of limbo to me, you know, where you, they send you to be <laughs> separated, like this in between place, ne you know, neither night or day. And um, I don't know, I felt, I felt almost when you're stranded, when you've been separated by, I don't know, something or someone, naturally there's going to be a resentment there. Naturally there's going to be some type of anger. You know, it feels so overwhelming at times. I don't know, it just. How do you cope mentally? How do you cope spiritually? How do, how do we progress? That's what I think I'm trying to get out of. Metaphorically use that wall as a, as a barrier. That's what it is. Basically, it's a barrier. And in life, we have many different obstacles that we have to overcome. 
So that's just one barrier. But it's a case of sometimes, rather than trying to find a way of how to get around this wall or over this wall, it comes to a point where, you know what, I'd rather just lean against the wall. You know, lean against the wall and just chill. You know, for a, a large part of of life in London growing up is that you're learning about yourself about yourself in this environment and what you can and what you can't do you know what is possible and what is not possible and now the reality is that living in London one of the most expensive places to live in in the world requires you to have to make sacrifices and those sacrifices could be sacrificing having a family settling down in order to try to um, gain some kind of financial security. A price does come with that. You can't have it both ways unless you are very successful. Everyone wants to have their own house. Everyone wants to have, you know, their own place, drive a nice fancy car, you know, live a decent life. But to live that decent life is a lot harder than it looks. And the reality is it's a lot harder for some than others. You'll find that many artists who have a passion for art go through this kind of struggle where they're having to sacrifice their passion in order just to make ends meet. And that is the reality for a lot of artists who are not able to meet all their financial requirements through their creative work. Basically, their creative work is not paying bills. You know, I think the first realization you come to is that, you know, this is going to take a lot longer than I first thought. And that can create an element of self-doubt. You start to doubt your creativity. You start to doubt your belief. That lack of belief can lead to depression. Depression will also be bring about some mental health deterioration. So it's all interlinked because we live in a world where we're faced with all sorts of pressures. And um, if there's something that gives you pleasure, joy, happiness, and stimulates your mind from a creative standpoint, you're not able to utilize that in order to be successful within your um, chosen art of creativity. It's obviously going to affect you in some way. And then you're going to want to point the finger at someone or something the reality is that you have to just work hard, you know, you have to struggle. Sometimes your struggles may not pay, or sometimes it's a case of what are you willing to do? How far are you willing to go as a human being in general? You know, there may not be opportunities here, but are you willing to travel abroad or relocate out of London in order to seize that opportunity? Or are you someone that is going to stay within the same place and then look for someone to blame. You know, the reality is that no society is perfect and we don't live it within a, a perfect country. This country does have problems like any other country, but at the same time, like, what can we do? The reality is we're only here for a certain period of time before we go anyway. If we're able to achieve what we envision ourselves achieving, then that's great. If we're not, it's something we have to come to terms with. This could be any night, on any city of sober desolation. For that we wish to do, we do not. This could be any night, in any state of hate. The brewing comfort of depression, creating lust as if some long lost friend who only calls when once is found. This could be any night, in any borough of forgotten hope. Locking ourselves in and painting walls black. Sealing the morning beam from around about. Not wanting to wait till morning's day. This could be any night. In any village that charms all who dwell at its gates. Dazzling arrays of embers. Kindling wanting desires of shame. This could be any night. Don't let the night.